guess I'm still having a, a, a really hard time uh, with the, the future. Really? Uh, it's it's not it's not how I imagined it at all. Oh, this future. I thought I really did. I mean, I can't. Could, you, don't, you didn't get your sex bot yet? I did. I didn't. Did you uh, get one? Yeah. What the fuck? What else did you get? Yeah. The flying cars. His name is Larry. Oh. <laughs> and uh, wait, was there a mix up at the plant or? It, it wasn't what I don't remember checking off those boxes. Uh huh. You didn't those, specify. I did not you specify. Figured they just know that. I, and I <laughs> I think I even paid extra for that back hair that I did not order. <laughs> I don't even use it. Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck this is? It's like, wow, they sent me a Wookiee. Yeah. Well, welcome everybody to Rage Select. I am Jeff. I'm Jason. Uh, and you know what? We're going to be changing up the podcast a little bit. Um, specifically, I'm 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 just getting tired of recording fucking two hour podcasts, Jason. So <laughs> yeah, we're going to start answering a little bit lower, fewer questions, and we're going to start uh, maybe doing a little bit less news. Um, but before we get into any of that, uh, I think that I've talked with just about everybody from Rage Select about it, and I wanted to get your opinion, Jason, on the holidays. Oh. We're we're in the fucking death grip of, of yes. Thanksgiving. It's right around the corner, Black Friday mania. Christmas is going to be just a week after that. I mean, that shit goes by like no, nobody's yeah. business. My, how do I feel just about the holidays in yeah. general? Yeah. Do you, do you uh, usually do the, like, oh, my family gets together, we all passively, aggressively hate each other during no, the holiday season? No, I don't. I don't even see my family most most holidays. They all live elsewhere. Oh, okay. Uh, um, yeah. I I think last year I went to a restaurant. Uh huh. I think you and I talked about this for Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. Allison yeah. and I went to a restaurant and had turkey that way, and then there you go. We didn't put up any tree or any of that shit because which yeah oh pretty tree and everything, but then there's putting it together and taking it apart, and there was so much work. Yeah. My, I don't like all that work. When I was a when I was a kid, my dad thought he found the greatest thing in the world the year that they started selling those uh, VHS tapes that was just a fireplace. <laughs> because he's like, you don't have to clean the fireplace. Yeah. You don't have to buy wood and keep feeding it and poking at the fire. And shit. Yeah. Let's put this tape on. And Plus, was, also Texas. Why is it even a thing? Well, yeah. I mean, you know... Do, I'm, fireplace you're aware of the fact that i do have a fireplace in my condo right oh i've got one in my house yeah it's um, right right behind my tv oh that's right it is <laughs> i specifically put my tv in front of it because yeah. i'm like i'm never gonna use this bullshit yeah there's maybe I, one day a year when it's cold enough to actually legitimately you know uh, uh warrant that sort of thing and i just set the the twigs in my backyard on fire at that point <laughs> right stand in front of it uh um, yeah i just <clears throat> turn the heater up a little higher yeah yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I wish that sometimes I wish that Texas was more of a had more snow and shit like that. Yeah, me too. Just for like one day, just for Christmas, just just one day, just at Christmas, like Christmas Eve, just fucking snow like a ma- madman. Boom, you're good. Yeah. Well, I can't. I'm having increasingly more increasing difficulty in dealing with May through September. Uh huh. Because May through September in Austin, Texas. Fuck a bunch of that. Oh, the heat? That's well, a furnace, man. I hate it. Well, that's why you stay inside and play video games. Yeah, I, I know. Mean, I, I tend to... It's weird. Uh, like, Unlike the entire rest of the United States and or parts of the world, I go out way more yeah. when it's cold outside. Yeah, me too. Because you can put on a big old jacket. Yeah. And there's nobody out there. It's awesome. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it when it gets cold. Yeah, you go to a bar and sit out on the on the patio, and yeah, you freeze you your drink ass off. a while, you don't feel it yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. It thins, thins your blood. Take your jacket off. You get the polar bear club thing going on. Um, so yeah, and this season, I, I think that this is actually a really kind of exciting time right now with the new console releases yeah. and we're kind of closing down. Um, I think it's been a really good year so far for it's video like games. Christmas. It's like Christmas. Well, yeah. It actually is Christmas coming up. So, <laughs> do you think uh, what percentage do you think of children are going to get PlayStations and Xboxes for Christmas? Oh, a ton. You think it's going to be the big thing this year? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Cabbage Patch Kids. And, and, and if it's not, your parents don't love you. That's right. <laughs> yes, record your uh what's that what's that fucking terrible show where the they had the little girl's birthday uh and then they the the girls like, Sweet sixteen, yes, or whatever, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is going to be happening all over the United States for Christmas this yeah. year. It's going to be great. I want to. I just want to. I want to soak in the misery Man, of children. I remember <laughs> campaigning for my first Nintendo. Uh huh. Like, uh, there was a letter writing campaign 
from you to your parents? Yes. <laughs> there was a war waged. Okay. And what it was, was it, it was a psychological war. Did you just leave them around the house in oh, various places? I or? would type them up and hand it to them. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, and, and I would mention it repeatedly. I would tape commercials and play the commercials all the time. Finally, I think my parents, they didn't give it to me because, yes, we want to give our son what he wants. It right. Was, oh, we've got to shut him up. Just shut up. Yes. Just shut up. And, yep, it worked. Well, it worked for a little while, and then I just started talking about how I really need this game and that game. Right. And, yeah. mm-hmm. So, okay, well, let me ask you a question. Um, of the consoles that you've owned in your life, and this, may, this is kind of a, a, a big question, how many did you get for Christmas? Oh, I uh, two, two. No, no, no. Consoles in my life. Yeah, in your life, four. Which ones? Uh, let's see. I got uh, yeah, I got the Atari twenty six hundred. Okay, the Atari fifty two hundred. Oh God, you're old. That pile of shit. Um, <laughs> that giant thing. Uh, the uh, Nintendo. Original NES. The okay. original NES uh, and the Sega Genesis. Okay. How many uh, did you get? Uh, what if I had birthdays in there? Birthday? No, that was... Th- that was Never got a console for birthday? No. Okay. Every other console after that, mm-hmm. I bought for myself. You just bought? Yeah. Let's see. For me, I think it was... Oh, I did get Game Boys. Game Boy? Count that. I got a Game Boy. Like what? the OG Game Boy. The green and black one. Yeah. The terrible one. I got that one for Christmas. Everybody's going to be like, oh, it wasn't terrible. It was terrible. It was fucking horrible. It was terrible, it you was, guys. It was good for nothing but Tetris and, well, Metroid 2 was pretty good. Okay. But do you remember playing Metroid 2? It's such a dark game. You were just like, what? Yeah. What is I this? I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Um, I think for me, I got uh, Super Nintendo, uh, PlayStation 2, GameCube. And then I think on one Christmas, I got enough, like, store credit and my own money, and I returned some of the gifts that I got and bought the PlayStation 3 back when you needed a billion dollars to get a PlayStation 3. I think the Christmas, I think after that came out on that Christmas, I think I, I uh, swapped in a bunch of my shit and, and managed to, to come out the other side with the PlayStation oh, 3. yeah. Uh, I always feel bad, though, thinking back on it, because whenever I got a console for Christmas... You know, I always spend Christmas with my family, and I get the console and make nice with them, and then it's Christmas after everybody's opened the gifts. Yeah. Post-breakfast, pre-dinner, I just fucking disappear into a room with the yep. console. Yep, exactly. Like, hey, we're going for a family walk. Do you want to come with us? No, I'm playing Metroid Prime. It's like, Merry Christmas. Don't bother me. I'll let you fuck off. Do you want to I'll hear- be rubbing my genitals all over this shiny new console. Do you want to hear a really strange thing about the PlayStation 2? This is something that you would never guess about Jeff as a as what a What did you gamer. do to it? So I bu- uh, I got a PlayStation 2 for Christmas and I got Metal Gear Solid 2 mm-hmm. with the PlayStation 2. Now I was, you know, was a teenager at this point so whatever, but um so I played Metal Gear Solid 2 start to finish in like a day and a half. And then I took it back and returned it. What? And traded it in for Grand Theft Auto 3 because I looked at what you could do and once you got to the end of that game, it's like I had one game. I had one game for my PlayStation Two. Yeah. And when I beat it, I looked at it, and I I think I might have even beaten it twice. <laughs> um, I looked at it and just went, "Well, I don't want to just play this one game over and over and over again." And everybody is saying that Grand Theft Auto Three is the best thing to ever happen to video games ever. Yeah. So I went and got that. And later on, I went back and rebought Metal Gear Solid Two. Uh, but. Yeah, I traded in a Metal Gear game. That's wow. my secret shame. Nobody's, wow. Nobody knows it. Kojima will never forgive you. That's right. Because he listens to this podcast he's, he's, all the time. He, you're, you are going to be waiting for Peace Walker or whatever it is. Uh, whatever the new... Phantom Pain. Phantom Pain. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it... Peace Walker. What was Peace Walker? Peace Walker was the last one. Oh, okay. You're going to be waiting for Phantom Pain, and uh, you're going to hear footsteps on the roof. Uh-huh. And then uh, you're going to hear this, oh, is it, is it Phantom Pain? Santa, you bring me Phantom Pain? And Hideo Kojima is going to come through the, the chimney and just go, you have disappointed me, Jeff. <laughs> and then he's going to say, fuck you, and flip you off. Uh-huh. And then he's going he's gonna to leave revengeance. Oh. And then he's going to just disappear. 10,000 copies yeah. of Metal Gear Rising. He's going to put, yeah, he's going to put his finger next to his nose. And then, whoof, he's going to use, uh, he's going to use Kojima magic. 
He's gonna. He, I'm gonna get the the gypsy curse right. Where whenever I put any game in, it happens to be Metal Gear Revengeance. <laughs> no matter what game I put in. No. Grand Theft Auto 6, Red Dead 3, it doesn't matter what I put in, in PC, console, or anything. It's always just Metal Gear oh, Revengeance. This show is going to suck. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go. I'm going to have to move away and become like a survivalist. Like those <laughs> dudes in that dude in Trevor, Tremors. Trevors. Trevors. <laughs> Tremors. <laughs> Um, because I won't be able to play video games anymore because it's always just Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I'm just, yeah, well, if you're not going to be able to play video games anymore, yeah. I don't even see that happening. I just see you getting really, really, really insanely good at Revengeance. Uh, and just playing that nonstop all the time. You know what I would probably do is um, I would <laughs> I would have to find a surrogate. I would hire somebody to play all the new games and then I would just sit there and tell them what to do. <laughs> because I can't play it. If I put my hands on the controller, suddenly it just turns into a vengeance. But if they're sitting there playing, and I can still watch other people play video games. So you mean it's basically going to be a dojo when I play? Yes. Go over here. Go over here. Go do the, just no, left. No, left. No, but you hear the war, you're not hearing the horror of it. Is that <laughs> I'm going to come to your house when you're just straight up playing video <laughs> games and then do that? Yeah, I imagine if you couldn't play games, it, it would be like on the news or something it's like a man was found uh uh stumbling naked down interstate 35 crying <laughs> didn't really know where he was oh come on it's not that dramatic jason i just turned to drugs uh, or i was about to say that was that was the other option come on man you will become <laughs> this uh you so jeff pretty much only drinks heavily on fridays and saturdays pretty that much. shit would those boundaries would be gone no 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 it's like you'd be no. banging on the door of the hideout like Come on! It's no, 11! Oh, no, Jason, come on. I would just switch over to straight-up heroin at that point. <laughs> I just go to, get a William Burroughs typewriter and a, and a bunch of millipedes and uh, fucking, you know, heroin. Straight-up junk. RageSelect.com is going to take a weird turn. Jeff starts talking about <laughs> mugwumps and shit. That's right. <laughs> it's really what the people have been asking for. Yes. I know what they really want. Well, you know what? Um... We're, let's talk uh, in, in in the place of where we normally do our news this week. Uh, we're probably going to go back to news next week, but or actually probably not. Probably next week we'll be doing the same thing. Uh, is, there, I, is there something else coming? Uh, the Xbox One. Oh, good. I right. Can, I can watch basketball and also pull up my basketball fantasy league at the same time. Okay. Uh, do you have cable TV? No. Well, neither do I. So that port just ain't fucking getting used on the <laughs> Xbox One. <laughs> Might as well t put a piece of tape over it because we're never plugging fucking cable TV into that bullshit. Yeah. I bought a game machine. Yeah, precisely. That's what I'm going to do with it. Uh, but no, I, I it's well, the PS4 is out. Oh, Battlefield 4, when you get it, uh -huh. it only runs at 720p. Oh, on the uh, on the Xbox One. That's not true, is that it? That is true. I thought they said it was 1080, 60 frames. I thought they were there touting. 60 frames. Oh, but not 1080. No. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you know. 60 mm -hmm. frames for uh, uh, 60 frames per second because they were l looking at that and then they were like, "Well, we had to make some sacrifices." And are you and, outraged? Uh, I'm a little fucking annoyed. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> it's uh, that and Call of Duty 720p. Okay, and then like Rise is going to be like 900 or something, some weird. Oh, oh, no. I was like. 900 frames per second? I don't understand why they would even do that. What the fuck, man? Rise is now just a picture of a box spinning around really fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm, you know, I, okay, listen, I I can see the difference. You know how you uh, don't really notice much the difference between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second? Yeah. That's kind of how I feel about the 720, 1080 thing, is that um, you can see the difference between 1080 yeah. and 720, but it's not like, I don't want us to get into a point where in the last, what, 10 years, we've come to a point where it's like, 720p, yeah. there's dog shit, man. I'm, I'm not going to notice it until I do. And then and then I will be so angry. <laughs> I will I will howl I'm gonna come with over. fury, and I'm, my rage will sunder open the earth. Okay. Let me do that on uh, do that in South Austin, because yeah. I live here in North Austin, so if I Nobody will notice in South the Austin. Earth, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'm just going to come over to your house in the middle of the night with a laptop and like reprogram the firmware on your TV so that no matter what resolution it's running in, it always says like, you know, how your TV will say, 1080, 1080, 1080. You'll never fucking know the difference. Good. Then I have this mental image of you up on the side of the TV counting the pixels. You're like, 562, 563. Wait a minute. Um, but no, I uh, we got the PlayStation Four, and I I honestly, you know, no offense to anybody who thinks this one way or the other, but um, 
we've kind of tried to do things in the past, and I think it's kind of silly to try to review a console. Sure. Uh, because they change over time. They've got firmware updates. So I figure what I want to do is I want to tell you um, – I want to tell you my my getting it story because that was hell. Yeah, and then I want to. Uh, you don't have to review it, but just talk about we'll talk what about you think. It. Yeah, talk we'll talk about, about what it you like, what you don't like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So last Thursday, um, around eleven thirty, I had pre-ordered my PS4 at Walmart um, because yep. <clears throat> I waited, and everywhere else was you know yeah. they went like wildfire. So you had to go into the bowels of the beast. I'll tell you what. You know my my receipt from Walmart mm-hmm. didn't say pre-order. Said layaway, I put that shit on layaway, layaway. man. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably because they're using like the same POS system from yeah. like the eighties. <laughs> they don't. They never even had a code for pre order. Dude, the, like, the, that's the only way I can plug it in there is layaway. Yeah. Uh, so I get there and I go down to. I mean, first of all, I don't know about you, but I fucking hate Walmart. I mean, yeah. I feel the same way about. I feel I hate Walmart worse than I hate GameStop. Shit, that's dude. Saying really. Something. Last I'm not a Walmart fan. I used to be like, ah, eh, whatever, whatever. Watch some documentary. I'm like, ah, eh, it's not that bad, whatever. It's pretty bad. And then I started reading about how it's like, hey, bring in to donate food so that uh, some of the other people who work here who have fallen on hard times can have Thanksgiving. It's like, why don't you fucking pay them more? Yeah. Why don't you pay them a living wage, you fucking whoremongers? I, t- I told you when we were going to go play Mercenary Kings and I wanted to get a second controller, right? And I went to Walmart and they have... The, they had the wired Xbox controller. That's what I need. Wired Xbox 360 controller, and the the little you know little metal wire that you put stuff on in the store. You know you put oh, the yeah. blister packs and the little metal wire, right? Yeah, sure. At the end of it, it was locked. You want to know something about those little metal metal wire things to stick out on What's that? like end caps that you put little plastic things and you to hang them on? I can't even remember what they're called uh-huh. in retail outlets and stuff like that. Yep. I'm always afraid I'm going to fall and get like impaled, or it's going to go through my <laughs> eye. It's like a weird fear I have. <laughs> what? Like I see those things and I'm like. <laughs> oh, especially you know if they don't have anything on them, uh huh. And like just stick it out there. It's like or if you go to the toy aisle, <laughs> like a few days after Christmas, uh huh. And it's just it's like locust wasteland is Fallout Three and over just there. All these like metal pegs coming out. Yeah. Like, God, it's like an Iron Maiden. It's like <laughs> I got to be careful. I could slip <laughs> on, especially in Walmart. There could be like just a puddle of like bile, v- vomit, or <laughs> yeah. urine, or you don't know sperm. Who knows? Yeah, What's it's just a big. <laughs> A slurry of of <laughs> bodily fluids there that I'm going to slip and it's going to go through my eye. <laughs> it's going to kill me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm serious. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it's, I'm just like I know it's crazy. There's so many things in this world. You drive a fucking two ton automobile at 70 miles an hour every day. You have so much more of a chance of getting in a car accident than you yeah. do of slipping and falling on the little pointy thing. I know it's Oof. like some final destination thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, th- this wasn't even, you couldn't even hurt yourself on this one because the end of that thing was hooked to this this second, like, anti-theft device so that you, somebody had to come over there with a key and unlock it for you to be able to take the controller right, off the thing. Right. And I stood in that motherfucker for fucking 30 minutes. <laughs> I walked up to counters and nobody would acknowledge me. I, I was like, excuse me, and they ignored me. Yeah. And they just hiss <laughs> well, <laughs> click before jumping back up into the rafters. I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to be offensive here, but like the dude at okay. Walmart was really interested in selling a family of like twelve, like six really cheap cell phones. Okay, and I couldn't get one second. All I, I needed one <laughs> second to buy a fifty dollar <laughs> controller and get the fuck out of there. I finally drove. Up, <laughs> this won't mean much to most people, but you can you can translate to the people out there. I was at the Walmart on Anderson, right? You know that one. Oh yeah, that one's not even that bad. Parking lot. I drove from there to a Best Buy in um, what's that? Uh, uh, what's the BK's? mall that's way up north? The way, Doma- Lake Line. Lake Line Mall. It's way up there. Yeah. yeah, because they were. I found online that they had these controllers and they had like two, so I yeah. went up there and bought one. Uh, but that's like I drove all the way across Austin essentially, or the equivalent of all the way across Austin. Because I was like I was I was so fueled with rage. They so. were probably planning on eating you. It was like a coup or something. All those twelve brood. Uh, like, <laughs> there were there were kids just treating that place like a playground. They're just running around screaming, oh, playing yeah. with the toys. Uh, it's like, yeah. oh my god! I'm sorry, you guys. I don't believe in abusing children, but I still think you could hit a kid. Oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm down crazy. for that. I don't. Let's do it. I don't know. I'll get, I, I'll get married to somebody. Tell who Walmart I am available to discipline stray children. <laughs> 
I <laughs> to see a little pack part of time. a pack of abandoned children. They're like, "Hi, the Murph is coming!" <laughs> yeah, damn right. <laughs> He's like walking down there, just swinging a Nerf bat around. I'm, I'm bringing Scalpy, man. Whistling. <laughs> I'm bringing Scalpy and the Rape Yeti with me. What's your on what, a chain? What's the tune that you whistle when you're when you're walking down the? <laughs> <laughs> Leaning on these everlasting arms, an old gospel <laughs> hymn. Um, anyway, so I go to Walmart. I go all the way to the back of the store, and there's a giant line, right? Um, because the way that it was was they actually had like if you had gone down there, and I don't know. I mean, I went down there 11:30. I had mine, but. Um, I don't know how long people have been waiting that line, but like the first 20 or 30 people in that line that didn't have a pre-order, they totally just walked in and bought a PlayStation 4. Yeah. Like, they weren't all pre-orders. Anyway, I get in line. And this was at Walmart, right? At Walmart. Okay. Yeah. I get in line, and I'm right behind this couple. <sighs> <laughs> this couple that um, I think that they thought that they were smart and it, they probably were very smart, but I just wanted to punch them with the uh, knives um, yes. because they had procured themselves one of the little Walmart fat people scooters. Oh God. And they were in line with that so that one of them could sit down while they were waiting in line. And the problem that I have with this is that when the line moved up, the fucking bitch that was sitting on this Walmart scooty thing would wait until there was a gap of like eight, meters in front of her to pull up unacceptable and then she would pull up too close and she would have to back up which i don't know if you've ever been like right up next to one of those things they go boop 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 when it's time to yeah. back up and it's just oh my god would you fucking like i would have had more respect if she'd been driving an atv or a forklift or something <laughs> but i'm like those are for people who have given up on life you're getting a playstation 4 you obviously right. haven't given up on life yet um so there was that and i don't know Okay, this is a good, this is a good you know, hammering out everything personal about us on the air. Yep. Um, sure. So when you're in line somewhere mm -hmm. and the line moves forward and the person in front of you doesn't immediately move to fill in that space, but, uh, yeah. does it piss you off? I want. I wish I had a horn. We're just just honk. And I know. It's like get up there, motherfucker. When I was when I was standing there, I knew in my brain. I'm like, this is not going to make the line move faster. This is not even going to do anything if she moves Still, up. you have to maintain the integrity of the line. I just want to feel like I'm moving forward yeah. because it's, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to one of these. Have you ever been to a midnight launch before? Uh, no. Like, the they, they've they got it down. They're moving you along. Like, you you, you, you show them your receipt and your ID if you're a pre-order or they ask you, what do you want? And so there's one guy that's a runner that'll go back and get all that stuff ready and then you walk up and the woman checks you out. The only problem is that with consumer electronics of this uh, uh, expense, you know, they're you can't write a check, and they're trying to get you through. And like the guy in front of me was trying to buy a a warranty, so it took an extra fucking twenty minutes because I had to go find that. But mm -hmm. I'll get back to that. All right, so in front of me, I had the people on the fucking fat scooter. Right behind me were three teenagers. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I say it like that because it was a it was a woman, it was a lady. It was a girl, not a lady or a woman. It was sure. a girl. Yeah. And two boys. Yep. And I'm pretty sure that the the that the girl and the boy, um, the, the two of them were a couple, and the other one was their friend that had drove them there. And I think that the one that had drove them there like just got his driver's license. I mean, they looked like they were fucking 17. They mm -hmm. didn't look a day over 17. Sure. And oh my God, the prattle. <laughs> because all they were talking about was uh, like, and then fucking... Uh, Mr. Thomas gave me extra science homework, and I was like, fuck you, bitch. I don't... Uh, <laughs> uh, I swear to God. I swear to God. I can't, I can't make this up, Jason. One of those motherfuckers said this, and it's the third stupidest thing I've ever heard anybody like say out loud in public. Okay. He said... To, he, like There was a silence, and he was just making conversations. He said, he said, oh, hey, yo, man, check this out. I, I found this out yesterday. Did you know that like the word hungry when you're hungry and the country are spelled differently? <laughs> and I, I couldn't I, they didn't say anything and I couldn't help myself I just went I just face palmed as hard as I could I was just like <laughs> you don't need to buy this you need to go somewhere and read more books motherfucker <laughs> yeah so I was in line from 1130 until 1230 uh, and I finally got out of that Walmart at right around 1245 yeah um so, and the other thing was that I brought my, I had my jacket. I, it was kind of cold outside, and I came to the store, and I had my big, heavy winter jacket on. Um, but I don't know what it is 
but as soon as I got into the store, I started the this paranoia, this weird ass paranoia sort of creeping <laughs> in on me. Oh, like you're afraid you're gonna fall on one of the pegs. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. No, what I was afraid is that when I pre ordered uh, my thing, they gave me the receipt for it. They said, Bring this receipt. It's very important. Bring your receipt to yeah. be able to reclaim this. I'm like, you guys got computers, you can fucking look me up yeah. But they were like, Bring your receipt. So as soon as I get in there, I had this really weird irrational fear that somebody was gonna <laughs> yeah, fucking take that receipt away receipt. from this away from me. <laughs> So I wouldn't take my jacket off because I had the receipt in the inside pocket of my jacket where it would be very difficult for scooter place or dumb teenagers to, you know, get at me. Um, yeah, I, I'm picturing you with your hand inside your jacket, wearing this coat <laughs> yeah. in there in line, yeah. sweating. I was sweating. Looking around at everyone. Yeah. And everyone, th- the first thing is like, white boy's got a gun <laughs> and he's going to kill some people. <laughs> He's about to draw. <laughs> it was a, it was just it was this weird combination of paranoia and anger all together, and the fact that I was waiting in this line, and half the time I was waiting in the line, I was thinking correctly. It turned out, why don't I just go fucking get some chicken nuggets and come back here when this line is gone? I have a pre order, but I was afraid that the place was going to close that because it wasn't in the electronics department. It was like at the layaway counter, yeah. like customer service customer counter. service area. Yeah, uh, and I was afraid that if I left and that you know if I came back like w- once that line was gone, they were going to shut the whole thing down. So looking up ahead, and you know what really pissed me off was that the people in front of me when I came up, uh, the scooter people, scooter folks. Uh, when I came up, the dude was sitting on the scooter and he looked at me and I kind of gave him a little like, "Hey, well, how's it going?" And he was just like. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got the dumbass kids I don't want to talk to in front of yeah. me, the people in front of me who are antisocial, I don't want to talk to them. But then, like, just two people in front of there, there is a group of bearded, mid-30s nerd dudes <laughs> just having the time of their life. They're talking about, oh, what are you, oh, I wanna, uh, what's oh, what's the first thing you're going to do? And I'm like, my people. Uh, my people. Right? <laughs> I wanted to say to the, the scooter people in front of me, like, do you have a pre-order? Can I just go in front of you? Because yeah. uh, so anyway, I'll I, give you a chicken McNugget. That's right. If you let me in front of you. Um, so as I was there in line, like a bunch of people lined up behind us. Uh, so I'm in line for a little while, and then when I finally, at one point, one of the people comes out and they're like, "If you don't have a pre-order, this is it." And what was the strangest thing is that nobody in front of me, or I think two people from the line in front of me, got out of line and left. It was actually everybody behind me, everybody behind the dumbass teenagers. They yeah. had a pre-order. They were there for the fucking duration. Sure. Um, but everybody else that was in line went away. So I was literally at the end of the line already, even if you yeah. remove people that weren't going to get one. Um, so anyway, then I go up and I get the, I get it. The guy in front of me, like I said, he bought some kind of dumb extended warrant. Don't ever buy a fucking extended warrant. Right. It's, it's such a lame ripoff. Yeah, good luck trying to <laughs> cash that in. Um which I don't know, maybe the day one launch stuff, maybe that's worth it, <laughs> yeah. you know, with the PlayStation 4. But um and then I had another realization when they gave me the thing, because it's a it's like a briefcase <laughs> box. You're like, this is a VCR. Well, it <laughs> is actually it's a pretty thin box, but what I realized was that, you know, Austin has a plastic bag ban. Yeah. So they just told like twenty four people who come to midnight launch that you can't have a PlayStation, those people walked away. And now I'm walking with this giant (laughs) box that says PlayStation 4 across the side. Yeah. And you talk about, um, you talked about people thinking white boys got a gun. (laughs) On my way out to the parking lot, (laughs) more sweating. No, on my way out to the parking lot, I put on my crazy eyes and my weird face. Yeah. And I kept my hand in my pocket moving around (laughs) like I might have some, like a badger or something in there. Did you did you put on your? I just got my ass whipped at Marvel vs. Capcom three for the last two hours. No, face. you you've never seen my fake crazy face. It's even crazier <laughs> than that. So I got shifty eyed and wide and <laughs> fucking just mouth all moving around. Like, dude, that guy might be mentally <laughs> ill. I don't I don't want to mess with him because I was so paranoid. Now that now that you've 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 let us know. Mm-hmm. You've let us in on all of the thoughts that you were going through your head. I can safely say that you are mentally ill. <laughs> you know what? The exact same thing happened to me with the Wii U, and the exact same thing happened to me with the PlayStation 3. It's like I don't have any paranoia until the minute you put that box with the thing that I just spent $600 on in my <laughs> hand. And at that point, I'm like, bitches better fucking stay away from me, man. I will fucking, <laughs> I will destroy this thing on the ground before I let anybody take it away from me. <laughs> I will pee on you, and I will bite. <laughs> I become an insane person. I love it. 
I, I pissed on these these teenagers. <laughs> I urinated on them. I thought they were gonna take my PS4. <laughs> 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 just walking through Walmart, one yep. PlayStation 4 in one hand, Got feces it. in the other. Just... <laughs> yeah. Anybody goes for this, <laughs> they get shit on them. That's right. Uh, so anyway, then I got to my car, the paranoia wore off, I got home, I came up, um, I unpacked everything and turned it on. And <laughs> did you check the back seat, like make sure no one was lying in wait? <laughs> Um, you got into your car. <laughs> no, no, I had it in the front seat next to me. I did, though, have the very briefest of paranoid thoughts, and it was this weird thing of just driving around in the middle of the night. I didn't have the radio on. What if I get pulled over and the police take it? That was what it was. <laughs> that was what it was, is if I get pulled over and then the police guy. I'll let you go if you give me that PS4. Right, and what do you do at that point? You go, nah, give me the ticket. Then he's like, oh, no, you misunderstood. That wasn't, I wasn't making a deal. I was telling you how this is going to go down. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. How about I suck your dick? I will suck <laughs> your dick if you let me keep my PS4. Well, you know, it's funny because um, I, pro- I, I, well, I wouldn't have, I would have taken the ticket. But like, if it had come down to some horrible shit, like this PS4 was paid for by the fine folks who help support Rage Select. Yes. So it's not like I scrimped and saved up to buy this PlayStation Four. You guys helped us out, and we're returning the favor with content and stuff yeah, like that. So I'm find not... out, find out the the offending officer's name. He starts getting threatening anonymous phone calls from the ladyboy tequila slaves. <laughs> the rage select army is on your ass now. <laughs> um, so anyway, that was my story of getting it. I came home, you know, I did the update. I downloaded it ahead of time. It's weird to me to do it twice. I guess I booted into safe mode and did the 1.5 update, and then I yeah. booted it up. Uh, on launch night, the PlayStation Network was fucked. Like, I could not sign oh. in to save my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I finally just ended up playing some Kill Zone, and then the next day, everything was a lot better, so I ended up uh, going from there. But, you know, uh, you've had a chance to mess with it, and I've had a chance to mess with it. I'm, I'm say, uh, I really like the controller. I think that... Yeah, uh, it feels good. They've done a good job with um even just like i was noticing this the other day even just like the plastic on the back of it Mm -hmm. you see how it's like textured Textured, instead of uh instead of just smooth uh the buttons have a little bit more click to them which i like um the touch i haven't used anything yet that really uses the touch screen all that much but touch screen seems fine what were you using the touch screen on was it kill zone it was kill zone yeah kill zone use it to change between the different owl modes right um the speaker in it is kind of weird. It took me off guard the first time the yeah. controller started talking to me. I like the new triggers and the way that they feel. They put a lot of thought into the controller. Yeah, there's all, a, yeah. There's less pull on these than there is on like the Xbox controller, mm-hmm. but I like that because they're still kind of snappy and they're yeah. light. Uh, they don't have as much, um, uh, what would you say, uh, resistance right. as an Xbox controller, but right. I still like the way that it, it works. Um, the shape of it's real nice. The the only thing so far that I think I'm a little bit meh about is the um, the the UI the menu. I was just about to ask about that. Um, I really, you know, a lot of people out there don't like the cross media bar on the PlayStation. 3. I do not. I really do. I think it's an elegant way of dividing stuff up into categories, and then the way that it has the horizontal switches and then the vertical to go into those categories and see what's there: movies, music, games, and yeah. network and stuff. Uh, this is like two horizontal bars, and you've got the one that's got all of your social, you know, friend requests and stuff like that. And then below it is like your apps. Yeah. And one of the things that I don't really care for is the fact that you can't remove apps. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I'm sure that once we played it enough, things like their music, their dumb music service or their dumb video rental service or right. whatever will get pushed off by other yeah. stuff that we've done. Um, but right now what it does is it just every time you launch something, it puts that at the front of this list. And I prefer, a, and it's possible that it might just be in there and I haven't seen it yet, but I prefer a little bit being able to order things the way that I want them ordered. Sure. Um, it does, you know, I, I've, well, I tried to get Netflix work and Netflix didn't work. Yeah. That like locked up your system a couple locked of times. Locked up my system a couple of times. I don't know if that's a one-time thing or whatever. I do like how responsive it is when you hit the PlayStation button. It's just like, bam, right yeah, back to the UI. That's pretty slick. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you can go right between the game and the UI mm-hmm. means that, um, like, you remember on the PlayStation 3, like, if you would get, like, a multiplayer request or a friend or something, you get that notification pop-up, and you hit the button, and, and it would always idle there while it stopped the game, yeah. and then it would come to that thing. Here, it's just, like, 
you don't even have that overlay over the game. It's just out of the game into the UI and then back from the UI directly into the game. Uh, and I've tried it in games where you're just like right in the middle of like you're in the middle of shooting a dude in kill zone and you hit that button and just bam right back there. Nice. So I'm hoping the Xbox One is going to be just as responsive. Um, so far, the stuff outside of like the friends list stuff, um, it's easier to add a friend than it used to be. There's a little bit more. Uh, there's a there's a thing that comes up when you turn the system on that's like a what's new uh, thing that actually shows you like. Your friend just beat level two in kill zone, and this guy is playing this game, and this dude is doing this thing or whatever, which is kind of a um, kind of interesting just right off the bat to have. I don't know. I mean, I I think that what we're seeing right now for the PlayStation Four is going to be the beginning of many iterations. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more to come. Yeah, you know, yeah. as it goes on. Um, <clears throat> but overall, I think that for four hundred dollars retail. I mean, you get that the, is not bad at you all. Get the system, you get an HDMI cable, power cord, you get one controller and the and the charger, and you get. I, I'm not really super happy with it, but I don't even know if you've seen this. <clears throat> you get this thing, what which is, is the Bluetooth headphones this is the headset, essentially. Oh, it's a mono headset that you weird. You, okay, you put in. You know, you put. It's got one headphone that you put in your ear, and then it's got the little thing that goes here. Yeah, and then it's got a physical plug like on the Xbox that goes into the bottom of the controller. Yeah, so you can do broadcasting um, on Twitch or streaming yeah you can do commentary if you want which is horrible quality uh, i haven't tried it out yet but i'm pretty sure I, like it can't be as good as these microphones that we're talking right about too. right these things are heavy this thing is light heavy means good <laughs> yes heavy means quality and uh you get uh you get some some goodies with it too like uh mm-hmm. you get uh you get 30 days free of playstation plus you get 30 days free of their curiosity music garbage bullshit whatever it is uh, video unlimited and music unlimited, I think, or it might just be music unlimited. Yeah. Uh, you also get a coupon for ten dollars on the PlayStation Store, which if you have uh Call of Duty Battlefield or Assassin's Creed or any of those games that have the upgrades on it, that's yeah. cool because it means that they just paid to upgrade. Yeah, and you, uh, we're going to be showing this off, but I don't know how well it'll come across on you know with using YouTube as our as our player for the video service. But I was dubious as to how much better it looked, but uh, you. You know, we played uh, we played Assassin's Creed three on the PS three or Assassin's Creed four on the PS three. Yep, and then you showed it to me on the PS four upgraded and everything. Yep, and oh my. Okay, I wanted to make sweet love to it. <laughs> here's the as far as that goes. Here's the thing that I think that people need to know. There's been a lot of people out there that are like, you know, this isn't that big of a jump. This isn't a, a shift, and we've been saying that. I think everybody's been saying that. Yeah, since yeah. we saw it, this is not going to be. Like the shift from SD to HD, it's not going to be the shift from 2D pixels to 3D. Right. It's not going to be the shift, you know, up from uh, non-alias stuff to alias stuff that has built-in shaders and stuff like that. You know, each generation so far to date has had a marked thing that you can point directly to and go that, right, that, that, that. But that being said, there is a difference here, um, and it's subtle at first. But what I feel like the difference between the PlayStation Three and the PlayStation Four. Game wise, so far this is Killzone, Need for Speed, um, Assassin's Creed, and then I mean you know Contrast and Resogun don't really count because they're PlayStation Network titles. Sure, but what I feel like you're seeing is a a fuller, more complete experience that you're seeing. Like I haven't seen a single shadow yet that has been aliased, where it's got that jaggediness around yeah. the edge or whatever. Like it's all very smooth. There's now you're getting like physics in the bushes and smoke and particles and nice lighting effects and like really nice textures on stuff. And you're getting it all at the same time where it used to be that um, I, it's almost like I feel like the games that I'm playing on the PlayStation 4, especially Killzone, because I'm playing a lot of Killzone, feel just like a more complete video game than we're used to. And that might even go for... Um, Oh God, I don't. I don't want to say this, but that might even go for the PC as well, um, because a lot of times PC games are. Um, a lot of times when you play, I mean, I've been playing a lot of PC games recently, but a lot of times when you play games on the PC, you're looking at something that was kind of made for the console, but then it was up-res yeah. and had the stuff. A lot of times, I don't see PC games, or I, and maybe it's just because I haven't played that many this generation, but 
I don't see that many PC games that are adding in all of these lighting effects and smoke and dust and particles and all this stuff, and it's all running at a really good clip, and it's all running at the same time. Like, there's a mission in Kill Zone that I did where you fly down through the city and then you land at the IS VSA headquarters and you get out and you go and you do a mission there. Um, but, like, flying through the city, it's just like, at no point did I look at anything and go, oh, well, that's a, like a matte painting, right? Or that's, you know, right, that's right. just static texture or that's been lowered in resolution because it's far away. And I'm sure that some of that stuff um, is. It's just it's nowhere near as noticeable now as it used to be on the previous systems. It just feels like with the PlayStation 4 games that I played, the, the developers, they don't have to pick and choose anymore. They can just put it right. all in. Yeah. You know, when we played Need for Speed yesterday, I'm not really even the biggest fan of racing games, but God damn, it looked gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, smoke. And it was beautiful. Blurs of speed and, you know, lights on cars and just shit all over the place. Uh, foliage is less like blocks and more individual like leaves and, and systems and stuff like that. So the whole thing just seems to be presenting a fuller experience where you don't you don't need to upgrade, but I feel like sometimes in these conversations we're hearing this sentiment where people are saying, what even is the point in upgrading? Right. And there is a point. Like I feel like this stuff is better looking than it used to be. Um and I think that it's only yeah. going to get better. Well, this first year is going to be the transition period. I've talked to a bunch of people who say that they're going to wait, you know, for one reason or another. Sure. And, and all that, of these are... That is <clears throat> yeah, and perfectly all reasonable. And valid reasons. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like they're going to wait uh, for all the glitches to get ironed out. Sure. I get it. They're going to wait for better games to come out. I sure. get it. Uh, but then right around that time, mm. that's probably when we're going to be saying, yes, you need to upgrade because you won't be able to play this, 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 or this right. if you don't. Right. Um. Yeah, and 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 uh, to be honest, I mean, when we were talking about getting consoles for Christmas, right? Yeah, I, mean, I didn't get my Nintendo until it had been out for a year. I didn't get my PlayStation until it had been out for a year, or eight months, or something like that. I mean, up until very recently, I've never felt like you gotta buy the brand new thing. It's right. only because we're doing this as you know, run a video game website. People want to see the new shit. We need to be on top of getting that new shit out there. But if I was left to my own devices, God no, I wouldn't have a PlayStation Four right now. I mean. It, Yes, you would. No, probably no? not. No, I mean, okay. I waited. I waited. I mean, the PlayStation Three was the one of the only consoles that I ever bought very shortly after launch. And you know what? I got burned. Yeah, like, I, got, I, I was a year before yeah. there was anything worth playing on that I, thing. I had my like, PlayStation Three first. And yeah. I got it like right after launch. Uh huh. Only because my mother gave it to me because she thought oh, yeah. she was going to be able to buy it. And then sell it on eBay for a healthy profit. Mm -hmm. And right after she did, they released like another wave and everyone's stocks were replenished. Right. And that was done. And she's like, well, just keep it. I mean, you know, <laughs> but then I never played it. I didn't in, in in retrospect, I wish I had bought an Xbox instead of a PlayStation 3. Oh yeah. I really do. Because um there was just a, a shit ton more games. Yeah. And it took the PlayStation a long time to catch up. To catch up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean I was playing Ninja Gaiden Sigma calling all cars and watching the Blu-ray for the uh Brian Singer Superman movie. That was like all I can do on my <laughs> PlayStation at the time. Uh I mean I used it more for Blu-rays than I did for anything oh, else. Oh yeah. I think a lot of people did. Um so I mean I totally understand people saying that they're going to wait and I don't think that there's I, at this point um I think that it's nice that it's four hundred bucks, and I think you're getting a hell of a machine for four hundred bucks as opposed to, you know, six. Well, how much was the Xbox when it launched? It oh, I don't remember. Yeah. Four hundred somewhere around there. I didn't have one for a little while after it launched. Okay, I mean, I could I could totally understand waiting for this day one stuff to get ironed out, but sometimes I do think of uh, sometimes people. There has been some part of people talking about this where they seem to be espousing the notion that I don't really even need to buy this console, right? Uh, no, but there are benefits to yeah. it. Um, some guy wrote into the show. I don't, I'm not going to read his email, but some guy wrote into the show and said that he was going to buy a PlayStation 4, and then he decided to just take all that money and buy a PlayStation 3 and a whole bunch of games and because he's never had a PlayStation 3. Yeah, right on, man. That's a great idea. If you've not had one of these consoles, there's a ton of shit to catch Hell up yeah. on. yeah. you got 10 years of awesome games. That's great. Um, but I mean, your friends are probably going to make fun of you, but whatever. Your friends are always going to make fun of you. <laughs> you buy a PlayStation 4, your friends are going to make fun of you. What are you buying that for? <laughs> Why didn't you get a PC, you dumb jerk? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, so so far, you guys have seen the videos. We've done some live streaming stuff. Um, I think that right now, 
the biggest question to somebody considering buying a PlayStation 4 is, for the love of God, look at the games that are out there. And if you're not interested in, like, four of those games, there's no reason. Yeah, exactly. Because don't yeah. you never want to be in a position where you've got a new console and you're just going, but... Now, I will say that it compared to, like, the Wii U launch or even the PlayStation 3 launch or even the Xbox 360 launch, like, the fact that this PS4 and the Xbox One are launching and then on both those consoles... You can play the new Call of Duty, the new Battlefield, the new Assassin's Creed, and the new Need for Speed yeah. game. Like, the week they launch, this is the best launch I've seen in forever. Yeah, uh, I was looking at, uh, I think Joystick did a retrospective of, hey, let's look at the uh, launch games for the PS3. Let's look at mm-hmm. the launch games for the Xbox. And I really do think that these launch titles are much better. Yeah, so it's just going to, I mean, I haven't even looked to see what's next, what's releasing. Yeah. Uh, what's? I'm, I have you know, no idea. I'm looking up right now, but... Um, but I think that it's really smart that that we it's really smart right now that um that we've got these games because these are games all the games that I just listed off are all games that can tide you over for many months right like if you got Battlefield Four um you could totally play Battlefield yeah. Four for the next <laughs> three months Assassin's Creed lot of stuff to do okay so the next round don't really go until uh february oh wow end of february yeah well you got watchdog wait no no watchdog is... back oh god yeah yeah right. so the next big thing is thief 225 i mean there's probably going to be playstation network stuff yeah but thief 225 infamous second son 228 and by the way you guys i'm going off of the gamefly uh coming soon thing which is where i i get a lot of this stuff but you know if you've got uh, if you've got conflicting information, please put it in the comments because I, you know, I don't want to be. I mean, Pinball Arcade is released uh, on the thirtieth, and then after that, it's going to be probably February until anything. So, Watch Dogs is still TBD. Mad Max TBD. Drive Club TBD. Witcher Three. All this is TBD. Order eighteen eighty six. Dying Light. Evil Within. Wolfenstein. The Crew. The all Crew. All- that's the one. Oh, you were trying to think of yesterday. Yes. <laughs> it was fun. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, is there any reason to go out and buy this? No. But, you know, there's no, there's not really, there's not a shit ton of reasons not to. I'd be willing to bet that even if you see a hardware revision on the PlayStation and the Xbox in the next year, they're not going to drop the price. Uh, it's probably yeah. going to remain $400 for at least a whole year. Um and by that time, by the end of next year is really, like, if you really want to get in on this shit, wait until next Christmas, dude, then you would have a whole year worth of shit to oh, yeah. totally play. It's going to be some good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's the that's the PlayStation 4. I think it's good. Yeah, let's, um, and I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to answer a few of your emails. A little bit less than normal, so stick around. back yes it is time for questions uh which we got i mean i picked out a few the more interesting questions this week uh so without any further ado let's uh let's jump let's do it in uh this first one is from ricky jay and he says ricky jay the magician that's right he listens yep hey jeff and jason uh this is ricky jay on the site new patreon subscriber but you can call me richard or richo Richo. Whichever sounds better. I, I like think I'll go with Richo. I've Richo. Yeah, Richo definitely before. Richo. Hey, Richo, what's up? Uh, this may end up being a long-winded question, but I'll try to keep it short. Uh, Jeff, I'm sure everyone on the site knows how much you love Dark Souls and the challenging nature of its gameplay and so on. I remember you saying on a previous Unknown podcast on another mystery website that the reason you found it so much fun was the reward for effort, knowing that the game is tricky and you're kicking its ass anyway. Uh, if I've missed anything, please uh, anything else, please remind me. Having said this, my question is... Since you like that style of game and working towards a goal with eventual reward, why do you find games like the Total War series unappealing? I'm not a fanboy trying to convert you or anything. I'm genuinely intrigued. Uh, TBS, I don't know what that is. It's a Turner Broadcasting System or whatever. Uh, Like the Total War games have very similar concept of slow, methodical progression and reaching a point where you're dominating the world with an empire you built from scratch. Uh, I know that there are still... 
that I know that they are still quite different in many ways. That's good. Uh, and the Total War series is definitely not for everyone, but I'm just interested as to why you would love a game like Dark Souls, but at the same time find a Total War game unappealing, given the similarities. You guys are awesome. Keep up the great work. And if Nick is there, tell him he's all right for a palm, which he should understand. <laughs> it's like that pomegranate drink, right? Palm? It, that's, yeah, that's, that's what, what it is. That's what right. he's talking about. Uh, benevolent gamer from the land that... Gave you Striker Eureka Australia. Hey, uh, Ricky J. Richo. Richo. Um, I don't know, Jason. You want to take a stab at answering this for me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I, why, are you not into RTSs? Okay. I don't remember where you stand on that. I like RTSs. I don't like necessarily playing them competitively because that shit's gotten ba it's kind of bananas. N a n a s. But yeah. uh, um, but. I do like them. Like I love playing StarCraft Two single player. I like the I really like the Total War series or not the Total War the uh, uh, Dawn of War series. Yeah. Dawn of War One, Dawn of War Two, all the expansions. <clears throat> the problem that I get into is that um, what I don't like is the uh, there are some games, some games like um, hex based like old school yeah. paper games, and some games like Total War where it's 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 less micro and more macro like how fast your army can turn to flank an, oh, an opposing right. battalion right. and things like that become very important and to be honest i haven't played that many of the total war games i'm just not the ones that i have played i just haven't been super interested in the fact that i like i think it's really telling in certain types of games when when a when a game has time dilation because time dilation means that there's something happening where if you had to watch it in real time, it would just be fucking boring. <laughs> right. And watching an army of archers turn 90 degrees to the left, you know, is kind of boring. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I one of the last, I think the last Total War game they put out, they actually put out a patch on the PC. So if you zoom into the battles, it's super fucking bloody. Like, they added a lot yeah. of blood and violence in. Um, the main thing is just that a lot of times those games... For me, I've said this before, a lot of video games, a lot of the enjoyment that I get out of video games come as a personal power fantasy. Yeah. And so it's a lot more enjoyable to me to be the lone wanderer of the wasteland or the god of war or, in Dark Souls' case, you know, a medieval warrior walking into this dimension making as a, as a single, the personification of a single person doing these things as opposed to your commander where you have a whole group of people that you're dealing with it's just it doesn't it, it's not as visceral for me like it feels more removed from what's going on like if this upper level tactical thing like there's something different between you know flying the flying the the x-wing that blows up the death star and commanding the rebel fleet you know in return yeah. to the jedi are two different experiences one is a much more personal right. glorification thing and i think that that's probably why those games don't appeal as much to me is because I like the visceral thrill of of a single individual doing being stuff. Being the hero. Yeah, yeah. In fact, and I like that in in um, fiction too. I mean, it's the fiction that I like is a lot of times the lone wanderer stuff, like the the uh, like Roland in the Dark Tower series. Yeah, you know, yeah. where you have this one colossal badass who comes yeah. to town and changes everything. I love that shit. The Clint Eastwood man with no name stuff. I like the singular. Lone wolf protagonist yeah. kind of stuff. Now, you know Roland assembled a quartet, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And Speaking that was kind of where I stopped I wanted, reading the books. <laughs> I, w <laughs> I wanted to put that out there before you got called out on it. No, so. no. Yeah, I know. I know. But uh, well, the first, the first, the Gunslinger is the best of those books, in my opinion. Oh, least. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the rest of them are terrible or anything, but just like as far as enjoyment goes, I ripped the Gunslinger a new asshole and it took me a while to get through the, by the time I got to like the Wizard in the Glass, you know? Yeah. Um, that and there's also a higher learning curve towards those games, like learning how to maneuver a set of armies around and yeah. use those things. It can get very <laughs> meticulous. I mean, there's you know when you come to StarCraft and you pump out a bunch of hydralisks and send them in there and go, yeah, ha -ha, bitch. Yeah. Or you're playing Command and Conquer, and you finally learn to the, just build the light tanks and send them in. Yeah. The uh, well, I guess it's kind of the same thing with Dark Souls, but the the effort to fun ratio. It takes a long time for those two, uh, those two lines to to intersect. Sure. The other thing about Dark Souls that's interesting is that it's is that you know when you play Dark Souls, like there are videos out there that if you're good enough at Dark Souls, 
you can go through that entire game like wildfire, and it's it's predicated on how much your personal skill and experience of the game is factored into it. Whereas the Total War games, once again, I'm not trying to say they're bad because I don't really have much of an opinion on them. I just don't play them because the last time I played one, I was just like, eh, whatever. Um, there's just less of that personal that personal victory in my mind. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Um, plus, I don't. I'm a big fan of the future. I like the future <laughs> a lot. Most of those Total War games happen in the past. Uh, also, I have to Dark be Souls is clearly a futuristic game. It's totally in the future. <laughs> yeah. Could be in the future. You don't know. <laughs> um, also, uh, parts of the Total War games, especially when you get into like the whole kind of empire management type of stuff, yeah. I had to be real careful with games like that because I will lose, crack out. <laughs> yeah, I'll lose myself in them. Um, so it's one of the reasons that I kind of tend to stay away from civilization anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't want anything to do with civilization anymore. Not because it's a bad game, but because it's so good that I will lose days. I've into had, it. Uh, yeah, I've had friends get devoured by Civ. Yeah, it happens. It definitely happens. Uh, all right, moving right along. This next one is from David, and David says, Hi, Jeff and Jason. Uh, you guys have mentioned on a couple of podcasts that you purchased a new PC. What type of PC did you get? What are the specs? Uh, the reason why I'm asking is that I've been looking for a new laptop for gaming and for work, web designer slash developer. Which type of gaming laptop do you guys recommend that has a kick-ass video card and that has an uber amount of memory? Alienware keeps popping up. Within my searches, have you guys any experience with this type of machine? Is it a contender? Um, and then he says laptop background. I've been using a Sony Vio for almost four years. It's a Cord 2 Duo, 4 gigs of RAM, and NVIDIA card. I've been playing Star Wars The Old Republic and replaying Arkham Asylum. The uh, game runs okay, but I have had to turn the graphics settings to low. If not, the machine would overheat and shut off. I also run Adobe applications for work, Photoshop, mm. Illustrator, Dreamweaver. Thanks for the funny. Keep on staying classy, David. Actually, whoa, this guy sent me my sent me his phone number, his fucking <laughs> contact information, his that, website and that, shit. That's a hint. All right. Um <laughs> I'm sorry, I appear to tell, pick... him, tell him about the RAM. Oh, about the oh the RAM on yeah. my system. Okay, you gotta well, call him though. Let's call him right now. <laughs> Let's call him on the phone. Yeah. Let's conference call him into the podcast. Yes. Uh okay. So what is the what is the name of this stuff? It's... Uh and this this computer is something that has helped Rage Select tremendously. Very true. Particularly Jeff. I mean, it's enabled us to run some games he otherwise wouldn't have been able to run on there very well. Yeah. Uh and also saved a hell of a lot of rendering time. The render time is way lower. Um well for to answer his first question, um, this I bought this system from Digital Storm, uh, and these guys basically they make uh, gaming PCs, but they tend to do it. Uh, the The prices are low; like they're not charging you for a whole bunch of lights and bullshit. They're yeah. just kind of a nice assembly place. They've got a few different ones. The ones that I got was their cheapest. Here I can tell you which one it is. Uh, the Vanquish uh, with some upgrades. They've got some that are slimmer cases, and some that are like liquid cooled and. Uh, but this one is the cheap one. It was about eleven hundred bucks, and it's um, an, a Core i five, uh, GTX seven sixty, and eight gigs of RAM, and a terabyte, uh, no, two terabyte hard drive, one terabyte hard drive, um, with sixty four bit Windows and shit like that on there. Now, as far as gaming laptops go, I can't, I can't speak to right now. I can't yeah. speak to today. But this is what I tell people. I used to work at a laptop fucking store. And people would come in all the time. They wanted to play games on laptops. And this is what I would tell them, is that games are heat. Yeah. What makes games run is shit running hot in your system. Video cards, they generate a lot of heat when they're running. Processors that are running at peak efficiency, heat. Even RAM, even just standard just system bus transfer, all that shit generates heat. And heat is death for computers. Um and when it comes to a desktop, it's usually not that bad because desktops have plenty of room in them to vent that heat out, to radiate the heat, shove it out one side of the system, and whatever. Laptops, on the other hand, are all smooshed up together, and they're generating all this heat. So I don't generally recommend, if you're looking for a gaming platform, to go with a laptop. Um, I know that the I know that there's going to be people out there who are going to tell you this or that or the other thing, but here are the things that I don't uh, i think don't work about gaming laptops one any laptop that's geared for gaming that has the hardware in it is going to cost 
30 to 40 percent more yeah. than a regular old laptop the yeah. application laptop you want to spend some money gaming laptop or you know you take a you take a, a gaming laptop and then you take the equivalent specs on a desktop computer desktop computer is going to be less um two you're probably going to have a higher failure rate on a gaming laptop and this is from personal experience of working in the in the laptop repair industry is that when those video cards are running like that they tend to um Okay, so not a lot. This is, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. Go not, for it. Not a lot of people know this, but did you know that um, it's like five, five, maybe actually eight years ago now, somewhere around there, there was a um, the entire computer industry for the most part agreed to stop using lead based solder. Right. Um, and the result is that while um, the computer, you know, when you have lead based solder and you throw that computer hardware into a landfill and the water goes through it, then you get lead and you're drinking water, and nobody wants that. That's bad. Um, but as near as I can tell from my experience in the computer industry, when that change happened, the solders that they were using instead of lead-based solder are less uh, resilient. And they tend to what happens, I mean, this is what happened with the Xbox, is that it would heat up and it would melt the solder that was connecting the video card to the motherboard, and it would soften it over time, and that you would get this heating up and cooling down and heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down, that eventually it would disconnect that connection. I've seen the same thing happen in laptop video cards. And the thing is that having been a person who tried to fix people's laptops on the cheap, I can tell you that motherboards are not the most expensive part. Screens are not the most expensive part. The most expensive part is when you buy a laptop with a gaming video card yeah. in it. That video card, the to buy a replacement part will cost you almost as much as the laptop. And while I've had desktops that have never managed to burn up a video card, I've seen laptops burn through them like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, mostly because people won't tear the laptop down to clean it out, so it gets the vents get clogged up after a year. Then when it runs hot, it can't get the heat out of the system, and it just ends up burning shit up. Um, as far as brands go, I can't. I don't. I don't know. Um, I know that Alienware. They tend to be overpriced. Yeah, they tend to be more expensive than you really need to be spending. Yeah, that's just that's kind of a status thing, you know. Mm-hmm. It's uh, they've really got that. Hey, we're the we're the market. If you want, uh, if you want a gaming laptop, yeah. Um, but there's others out there. I mean, you know what? I was just on the website. I wonder if Digital Storm actually has laptops. They, they sell laptops, gaming desktops. Yeah, they sell laptops. I don't know. Maybe take a look at Gaming Storm's uh, laptops. Let's see what Digital they, Storm. Digital Storm, sorry. Uh, starting at twelve eighty four, that's their cheapest one, and it's got GTX seven sixty five mobile graphics processor, smart cooling, audio, thirteen inch screen. Yeah, I don't look know too if bad. this is still the trend, but there for a while, you got to be careful and and make sure that the video card that you're getting is not shared memory. Yeah, that. Is that is that trend gone? Uh, well, no, that tends to happen on an application. Like if you're buying something for gaming, it's mm-hmm. never going to have a. Or usually, it doesn't have shared memory. Right, right. It usually, be the application. Well, yeah. I mean, if do. you're if you're going to a, a place that that gives you you know purely gaming gear, but yeah. I know that uh, a while back, this was a couple of years ago, I bought a laptop mm-hmm. planning to game on it, but I didn't really do as much research as I should have. Ah, and the video card was embedded on the motherboard yep. and shared. Use the system memory. Yeah, which yeah. is not ideal. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just be careful. I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of people who come into the comments saying, well, I bought my laptop for uh, 25 cents and it runs Battlefield 4 at Super Maximum Ultra. I, 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 would, I would do more research than that. <laughs> yeah. And I would look around at, I don't even know where to look anymore. Maybe uh, customer reviews on Newegg. Maybe, I don't know if Tom's Hardware is still a thing that, that they have good. They used to do a lot of that benchmarking and stuff like that. Right. Just the thing is that if you're going, if you're hell bent on getting a gaming laptop, when you get it, just make sure that you know how to get access to the fucking exhaust ports and clean them out. And I don't mean like blow air. In blow back into the system because all that does is take that dust and blow it back in. It's going to come right back out. What you need is you need to be able to extricate the heat sink from the computer, blow it out, and put it back into the system. Yeah, a lot of people aren't comfortable with that either. But yeah, just doing the the little air thing. Those are just good for a uh, little air burst thing. That's just good for getting high. Yeah, <laughs> for huffing. For huffing. Huffing. Uh, the other thing to make sure of, and this is not something you know, uh, when they offer you your Best Buy. 
Uh, like, hey, we're going to give you three years of Best Buy. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> do you want the protection plan? Go fuck yourself. Like, do you want the... Say it with him. Do you want the extended warranty for your laptop? Yes, please. <laughs> I want the full, complete warranty, and I don't give a shit how much it costs me if it adds an extra $500 onto there, because I tell you what, the very first time that you ever have to use that laptop warranty for anything higher than a keyboard, it's already paid for itself. Screen, motherboard, processor, RAM, video card, any of that stuff. Especially when you consider that the GTX, I haven't, like I said, I've been out of the laptop world for three or four years now, but back when I was working there, a card like this CTX 765M would cost like $900 from the manufacturer. Yeah, right. For a $1,200 laptop. It would cost $900 to yeah. get the repl- just to get the part to uh-huh. replace it with. So so it's like, at that point, it's like, eh, just go ahead and get a new one altogether. Yeah, be careful. I mean, if, you want, if you're going to get something like that, just make sure that you protect it. Uh, all right, let's go on to... This one is from Detective FDRRR. Uh, he says, hey, guys, Detective FDRRR... I'm sorry, I just wanted to keep saying R's when I say that. Uh, (laughs) Um, In one of my college courses, we went over a book called The Last Lecture, and one of the biggest themes of the book is not giving up on your dreams. Since everyone in the Rage Select crew does something cool, example, Jason writes, Kristen is an artist, etc., I was wondering what keeps you guys motivated and inspired to to accomplish your dreams slash goals, and thanks for making such an awesome site. So, hmm. I hear, hey, here's a question that is that you can answer, Jason. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Make some inspiring words to the children. It's kind of esoteric. <laughs> what What was the, the end of the question again? What do you do to keep... Ins- I was wondering what keeps you guys motivated and inspired to accomplish your dreams slash goals. Uh, whiskey. Whiskey? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, See, sort of. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, uh, hold on. Sometimes. How many... How many um, how many like uh, joke answers can you give to this question? <laughs> <laughs> what keeps me motivated? Yeah, um, not wanting to sit in a cubicle. Uh, whiskey, uh, spite, spite, spite's a good one. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, just wanting that one chance to be at award an award ceremony, any award ceremony, preferably a televised one, where I can say. Thank you for this award, whatever that is. Probably never going to be an Oscar because I don't write that kind of shit. Uh, but uh, it's just so I can say, uh, I would like to thank my wife, Allison. Mm-hmm. And to the rest of you, fuck you. Yeah. And here's a list of people I would like to say fuck you to. <laughs> uh, that's Turn me. the music off. Yep. Turn the music <laughs> off. I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's. That's the dream. No, I, uh, but uh, so those are the joke answers. Those kind of kind of the joke answers. <laughs> That's, I, I Every would, joke is based in reality. Jason. I really would like to, to do something like that. Uh, and here's to uh, my seventh grade choir teacher. You fucking weirdo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you That's can kiss my ass. Weirdly specific. Oh, you, 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 okay, know. okay. Story. Oh, shit. <laughs> Story, dude. Okay. All right. About getting slapped down for my creative endeavors as a child. Mm-hmm. And this is this is topical. Uh, so when I was in seventh grade, uh, and I went to this small school in a small town, when I was in seventh, you know, it was very, a lot of people there, narrow, narrow-minded, not everyone, but a lot of people there were, um, small town in Texas, so it was, you know, was, uh, dominated by, yeah. uh, right-wing religious types. The man. The man. The man was keeping you down. Yeah. And, uh, my homeroom teacher, uh, well... Let me back up. One of the assignments was to write a short story uh, in English class, and I wrote this short story, and it was, you know, it was it was basically a Friday the Thirteenth Halloween knockoff. Okay. It was a slasher movie starring me and my friends. Cool. And one of my friends going berserk and killing everyone else in class, and I ended up stopping him. You know. So, oh shit! It's good you didn't write that today. You'd be a, a fucking arrested. Exactly. In an FBI jail. Oh, <laughs> me and my friends that, that I that I still talk to, they're like. You would you would be in jail. You would yeah. like be in Guantanamo now, <laughs> and that's totally true. Um, but yeah, I wrote this, and it was you know it was violent and stupid, and it was just you know, it was me doing Friday the Thirteenth stuff, and everybody liked it. How do I die? Uh-huh. How do I die? Oh, how, how do I? And I'm like, oh well, you get uh, you, one of my friends. He got uh, strung up uh, from a ceiling fan from his eight uh, bit Nintendo cables. Nice. Was lynched with that. Yeah. Uh, how do I die? Yeah. Everybody was always you know really into it, but. Uh, so, as these things happen, a sequel was demanded. Uh-huh. And so when the next time we got to write a short story, I was like, Psh, 
Time to write the sequel. <laughs> yeah. This is my, my 15 minutes in junior high fame. <laughs> there you go. And uh, so I was writing the sequel in Homeroom. Uh-huh. I was really excited about it and everything. And and uh, uh, the, uh, my uh, Homeroom teacher came over to see what I was writing, and he was reading it, and he said, that is trash. Mm-hmm. That is trash. And I was like, what? this is... I'm usually applauded for my efforts. Right. And I, I, you know, creative writing and prose and everything, it's one of my babies. I love doing that. And uh, this was seventh grade, you said? Seventh grade, yeah. So you were, what, 13? 12, 12, 13, somewhere around there? Something like that, yeah. Okay. And he was like, that is garbage. And then this one girl in my class, Danita, she stood up for me. It was awesome. She was like, she was all, no, uh, his stories are good. I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, and he started yelling at her. He's like, no, no. It takes a warped and demented mind to come up with something like this. <laughs> and it should not be tolerated. And, and I mean, he was just coming down, like, ready to start the Salem witch trials. Holy you know? shit. And I just kind of sat there just like, I didn't know what to do. Because I was a very you know, timid kid. Right. Uh, but she was, like, arguing with him. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh uh, things escalated with the parents and and all that, but yeah, I got slapped down. And here's what I'm saying: that guy's dead, and I'm still writing. <laughs> so take that one. Whenever I'm sitting there, I'm writing something, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, this is this is disturbing or whatever. I think of that fat fuck uh-huh. telling me that I'm warped and demented, and maybe he's right. Yeah, maybe he's right. But you know what? He's fucking dead, and I'm still writing. And I'm still writing some of that stuff. And I think about him, and I'm like, yeah, fuck you, buddy. And uh, so that's the whole writing out of spite thing that I mentioned earlier. Sure, yeah. But yeah, it's like, you know, you got to write. You sit there, and you write stuff, and it's it's uh, it's like, I got to do this, or I I got to die. And if, it, if it's a chore for you, well, it's, it's going to be a chore for you sometimes. But just do it. Do it every day. Yep. Whatever creative endeavor that you like to do, you do it every day, and don't do don't stop doing it because people tell you to stop, uh, or, or because you're weird or because you're bad. You keep doing it because they tell you that. Yep. You do it in the face of everyone telling you not to. You keep going, and you pick up your pen or your pencil or your paintbrush or your microphone or your guitar or whatever, and you keep doing that Amen. Uh, in the in the onslaught of the naysayers and the the God help me, I'm going to say it, the fucking muggles <laughs> and all the all the <laughs> bastards who would keep you down. You grit your teeth and you stand next to next to the 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 river of truth as Captain America said, and you say, no, fuck you. And you just keep going, and yeah, because that's if that's what you want to do, and that's what you love to do, you fucking do it. And uh, yeah, take this as inspiration. Maybe without all the swears, I don't know. Don't S- don't throw my mic down on the ground when you're done. I'm not. Don't throw my mic down <laughs> on the ground. I'm <laughs> not going to drop the mic, but <laughs> but don't let the bastards drag you down. Yeah, I, I for my own self, and also whiskey, <laughs> also whiskey. You know, I um, I spent ten years. In retail slash technical support slash the computer industry cubicle world, and whenever I need a kick in the ass, I'd close my eyes and remember what it was like every day to want to stab myself instead of go to work. Yeah, and then go. You know, there's times where I get frustrated at doing this, and people in the comments are jerk offs and blah blah blah, and maybe we're not making enough money, or oh my god, PewDiePie is blah blah. Uh, at the end of the day, I still get up and either swear no microphone. Or play some motherfucking video games, and that's awesome. Yep. And I love video games. Yeah. I mean, people. Some people are like, "Oh, you're too harsh. Or you're blah blah. Or you don't know." It. But at the end of the day, if I didn't love video games, I'd go back to the other soul crushing job because there's right. more security there. But yeah, fuck it, man. Like you know, you only get one. You only get one shot at doing this shit. You might as well try some shit and see what happens. Keep at it, man, and get it out there through any means necessary. Because I've got a lot of stuff that I would love to do that has. That has never been seen. Yeah. You know? But you just gotta just you can't quit because it's hard. It's yeah. really hard. It's gonna be really hard. And you're gonna have people telling you you suck, but every now and then you get that little that little spark. Maybe it's from someone else, maybe it's from inside. It's some little maybe it's a movie you see or a song that you hear and you think, yep. I can do this. Yep. Then do it. I mean, can you imagine? Let's see. We from uh, around December of this year. 
I was actually looking at this, that around December of, of this year, we will have been doing this for two years. Yeah, it seems like longer. Seems like longer. Yeah, because every 30 minutes with you is a fucking eternity. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you had gone to me three years ago and shown me a picture of that fucking puppet talking, <laughs> I would have been like, how the shit did that happen? Like, this, yeah, right. How did we get so far gone that we're fucking yeah. having the Muppet swearing out that it's, it's fucking meet the feebles for five minutes before we start this shit? Like, yeah. It's fucking weird. So yeah. Anyway, um, at the end of the day, just you know, don't don't. There's always going to be somebody to tell you that you can't do it, but you can. And if you, you know, even if there's not somebody telling you you can't do it, sometimes you tell yourself you can't do it, but that's not true. Hey, you and really maybe can. you suck. Maybe you're horrible, but that's, that's never that's, stopped anybody from yeah, success. I tell you what, you want to know what one of my biggest inspirations is? Go back and watch um, the Anton Ego speech at the end of Ratatouille. Uh, that's <laughs> one of my one of my big things. Even though you know his his speech is all about criticism, and that's kind of what we do now. But yeah. you know, whatever. All right. Well, let's move on. We've got a, a couple more, and then we'll be out of here. Uh, hey, Jeff and Jason, are there any games you love so much that you don't want there to be any sequels to those games? Perhaps because a continuation of the story would ruin the perfect ending to the first game, or perhaps you might be afraid a sequel would never be as good as the first game was. Anyway, big fan and keep up the awesomeness. Uh, I'm from Belgium, so I apologize for my poor English. Brutal Brutus. Actually, Brutus, you had... Yeah, it sounded uh, fine to me, that man. That was fine, man. <laughs> Short Thanks for writing in. To yeah. the point. Uh, Write it think? in Belgianese next time. We'll run it through Babblefish. That'll be fun. What do they speak in Belgium? Belgianese. No. <laughs> That's what it is. Dude. That's not a Look thing. Look it up. Belgianese. Uh, Belgianese? Look it up. That is a word. Look it up right now. Yeah, okay. Belgianese. Bel... That's the, the official Gen- language of Belgium. Ease. Yeah. No, I don't speak Belgianese. There it is, right there. Uh, these are all the like internet doesn't lie. The, no, these are like Twitter and, and Twitter doesn't lie either. It's got to be like Austrian or something, right? Language <laughs> Austrian's not a language, and neither is Belgianese. You dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Flemish. Okay, it's Flemish. <laughs> God damn it! You look stupid. Anyway, answer the man's question. I just wanted to see if I could get you to look it up, and you did. I did. I did. And there were like four articles. You're like, that's what it is. I'm like, no, this is somebody's Twitter handle. <laughs> Belgianese isn't a thing. Have you ever had a Belgian waffle in Belgium? No. I, good. Have I been to Belgium? They're good. I don't think so. The only thing I did was get off the train to get a Belgian waffle and then eat it and then get back on the nice. train. So. That's, I know that's where they have all the diamonds, and I'm going to stage a heist one day. In Belgium? Yeah. Antwerp. Belgium. Okay. Antwerp. It's where they have all the... I think that's where they have all the diamonds. Mm. Anyway, whatever. I'm not an international jewel thief. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not either. Yeah. <laughs> but goals uh, and dreams. G- okay, so games what, what, you oh, wouldn't want to see uh, a sequel to? No. Yeah, no, I, not at all. I might... You know, uh, the only series that I've ever thought is... Um, I think they should stop making Metal Gear games. What? What? Uh, it, it's a... Uh, I've talked about it before. I think that the story Where is Jeff. And the, what have you done? No, with him? the story for Metal Gear got wrapped up in Metal Gear Solid Four, and this is like the oh, third yeah. new game that's set in the prequel kind yeah, of universe sure. before that stuff. I think that they need to just let that shit go because every time they try to add more to it, it gets a little bit more ridiculous. And I yeah. still, I love it. I still love it. It's yeah, I love it. But I just feel like they they maybe need to make a true sequel universe to what they've already got, like they were trying to do with kind of Revengeance, even though I was... Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Also, maybe God of War. I kind of feel like they should stop making God of War games. And okay. Maybe... I like a new IP. I don't want them to make... I don't want sure. endless sequels. So. Yeah, well, I mean, for for that reason, yes. But uh, for the reasons he was uh, leaning towards, like, uh, uh, is it going to tarnish the original no i i still think that the original is is there and and pure the only problem with that is if they do something that screws up the character maybe so yeah okay i'm gonna change my answer yeah i i I can't really think of something right now about red dead they made a red dead 2 and it was john mar but see rockstar has such a good track record that the chances of them fucking that up is so low that i don't know i i I still with my mindset i can still go back and enjoy the original ones even if the sequels are crap i I think it may do i mean like mass effect i think has uh, but you know what mass effect 2 is still the tits yeah it is it is like 
I was going to say the third one kind of, but yeah. no, it really doesn't. Yeah. Still just go back and enjoy that plot. There have been some bad, like, okay, mm. let's let's think of it this way. Yeah. KOTOR versus KOTOR 2. Does KOTOR 2 tarnish your memories of KOTOR at all? Absolutely not. And do you wish it had never been made? Nope. Okay. Well. So there you go. Um, mm, it, well, okay. No. Uh, okay. Kind of. But for a different reason. It doesn't sure. tarnish that. I just wish that KOTOR 2 had been good uh, or no. better. I wish that KOTOR 2 had been made by the original team that made KOTOR with the same passion that KOTOR was made. Uh, okay. Because it was blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we, yeah. we, did, we talked about Obsidian all day yesterday. I'm not going to talk about Obsidian. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to say it, it's, not as, it's not as maybe common. I, it's not a, something that I come up with. You know what? Uh, this came up for me when Bioshock 2 came out, where people were like, just leave Bioshock alone. We don't need more Bioshock universe. And I was like, dude, I want more Bioshock universe. I love that universe. I don't even care if the game is not as good as the first one. If you just give me a little bit more of that, that awesomeness. Sure. Um, so yeah, brutal Brutus, not as much. Um, these last two. Okay, you know I've been asking people for like um, three months to send us questions that yeah. are don't know anything to do with video games. Yeah, I got a really good one here today. No shit. Yeah. All right, you're gonna like this. We've had some actually some damn good questions this round. This is a this is I like this one an awful lot. Uh, hey guys, the Lord Monkey on the site here with a quick non-gaming question. I hear that Jeff tore into the SCP stuff. Any favorites or anything else you'd like to bring <laughs> up about it? Some of my favorites are 55, 105, 1981, and I really think that you should give those a read if you're still into the SCP thing. Thanks and have a good day. So have you have you cooled down on the SCP thing? Or are you still still rolling on the database? Uh, you know, yeah, I haven't I haven't been diving into it as much. Um, mm. I uh, there for a, a couple of weeks, like right around Halloween, I was just devouring them. Yeah, that was uh, kind of all the rage with I a probably, bunch of us. <laughs> yeah, I probably read like a hundred of them. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now here's a question: uh, Have you read SCP 001 yet? Uh, where it's I think it's, so. It's actually a series I, of five different proposals because the. The actual oh no I what, have not what is zero zero one is like so important that they've written like eight different entries for what it could be as misinformation hmm. so some of them are like um, are uh, the the origin of the SCP Foundation and some of them are uh, there's some really interesting ones out there but yeah. I don't know I've, I I can't keep all the numbers straight mm -hmm. you know um, which one is fifty five fifty five is uh, and I can't remember them very well. There, there was one that you told me about, and one that I, God, somebody posted it uh -huh. somewhere. I, I found one that was that was just for you. That was uh, oh, the pizza box four five eight SCP four five. <laughs> yeah. I think it was four five eight was the pizza box. I no. actually found another one for you last night that was called um, the uh, the sociopathic tumbler. That is a a glass that fills up with what looks like whiskey. Yeah. And when uh, you put two people near it, one person will start drinking it. And when they yes. start drinking it, the second person can't get within one meter of them or a 20, more than 22 meters away from that person. And the other person just starts suffering horribly. And the first person's uh, mood is affected so that they will drink their drink and comment on the suffering of the other person <laughs> in the line. <laughs> I think I have that. And that when they get when they get done with the drink, the spell is broken, and they'll be like, "Oh my god, what what happened? What happened, Jim? What's wrong with you?" Except that they will also like try desperately to fill the glass back up with anything because oh, it man. then turns back into that golden liquid, and the whole thing starts Did over. Did the SCP again. Foundation take my tumbler? <laughs> I need to call Allison right now and make sure my tumbler is still in the in, in the cabinet. Yeah, I read a whole bunch of them, and I've been going into some of the some of the offshoot uh, like fiction stuff. Oh yeah, from there. There was one that was a really big one that was like in the six hundreds. That was all about this area in Russia that's filled up with these mutants that they've tried to. Oh wow, it's got this huge underground tunnel system that they've tried to map but there's like you know at one point a giant face comes out of the ground and they burn it down but it's basically can't be contained they just have to have a big ring around it yeah did there's the blood pool did you read that the blood one? pool i was about to bring that one up that that's one of the ones i really liked of course i i lean towards the the horror ones i like the blood pool uh the the teddy bear mm -hmm. it's like one four 14 something yeah the, the one that that at first they it was classified as safe and now it's like it's very much not it's either safe. keter or you i think it's yeah. keter actually because I it's actively so. hostile yeah and then there was the one where it's like the 
the pale one where you can't see its face, and if you do, there's nothing that can it's contain it and 0-9-6, tries to kill you. Six, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And even if you see like a picture of its face, it kills you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I like that one. There a was lot. one that I read uh, yesterday that was um, the it was a carnivorous coin. <laughs> it was a quarter, um, but the quarter. Like the George Washington face on the quarter can turn and open its mouth, <laughs> and then it will try to eat organic matter. And then if it eats enough of it, it will produce a second quarter. Like it'll double, yeah. and then it'll peel off. And that it will, um, it moves like a slug, like it contracts and goes long. And then when it gets <laughs> close, it'll flip up on its edge and try to jump at people. So apparently they had a, uh, it, it's classified as safe because you just keep it in a box, nothing ever happens. But they had an outbreak where. Uh, the person was transporting it and they lost it. Um, and there was a second outbreak at the same time where that didn't get reported properly. And then like six months later, a janitor was cleaning out the basement and found a nest of like 400 of these carnivorous quarters <laughs> that killed him. <laughs> and they melted down all but one of them and put that one back in the in the containment. Uh, yeah, that, that thing is just a, it's a gold yeah. mine of... of uh, you could sit there for days days mm-hmm. reading and i did <laughs> yeah scp zero the all the zero zero one stuff is really interesting um yeah i think that uh there was one of the scp zero zero ones that was really interesting because it had it was this building that had these rooms in it where all of the keter class scps have come from and in each room would be um two keter class scps that were keeping each other in check uh, like there's one. Have you read the one with the four horsemen of the apocalypse in it? No. There's a diner where these four old men show up every day. And oh, eat lunch. Yeah, you. I, I think you told me about it. Um, and if you stop any one of them from going into the diner or remove them before they're done eating, then an area will start to affect people around them based on which one of them you stop. So the people will get violent, or they'll start losing the famine, or you know, yeah. pests, they all get sick. Uh, so in this SCP-001, they had the – I told you about the self-replicating cake, right? Yes. That just – if you don't eat it, it makes more cakes and right. it could destroy the entire world. So there was one of these rooms that had the four men from the diner that were being forever served the cake, the replicating cake, because they never left and they stayed there, but they would just keep eating the cake. And so you have these – there was like eight rooms that all had different SCPs that were keeping each other – from doing, ah. from leaving or doing anything um, that were really really cool. Yeah, I don't know. I I still think oh, we got we got to figure out something to fucking do with that I know. shit because it's so good. I just don't know. I was thinking live action, but I don't know if we have the no. resources for that. <laughs> we do not. They can animate it. I don't know. We're gonna do something. But yeah, folks, if you have not yet looked up at the SCP Foundation, do so because it is rad, it's fascinating. All right, one more question here. This is an advice question that I pulled just for you, Jason. Oh, no, shit. <clears throat> this one is from Pat. Pat says, this is completely unrelated to video games, but I want love advice from the masters of romance. Yeah. That would be you. I'm not masters of, I'm the master of creepy. That would be Charles St. Charles, but he's not here right now. Yeah. Uh, I am in college, and I used to sleep around all the time. Yeah. But I have been dating a girl for two and a half months now, and I love her. I've never told a girl I love her before, so how do I tell a girl I love her for the first time? Uh, you wait. Wait? You wait. Yeah. Two and a half months? Yeah. Whoa. Okay, maybe. Yeah? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I Skyriding. I would... Um, uh, flash I, mob. I, I think you should find a homeless man, uh-huh. sever his penis... <laughs> <laughs> and take the dripping blood. You got to move fast before it coagulates and ride it on the sidewalk in front of her house, dorm, or apartment. Okay. Say, and, and you have to ride it in the blood. Say, bitch, I love you. <laughs> and how do you get her attention to look out on the sidewalk? Uh huh. Screaming hobo. Screaming ho- Oh, what? The, what? After you sever his penis. Okay, yeah, you got to. Oh, so you got to ride really fast. Yeah, you got to <laughs> cut it, cut the dick off. Right, but before she gets. She the- cut it off right the, right outside. Before she's then, alerted by the screams. Yeah, and then ride it fast <laughs> and then smile. And if she still. She doesn't come to the window from the screams, you throw the dick at the window. <laughs> you just throw it at the window and say. <laughs> get her attention. Because nothing says I love you like a severed penis through your window. Nothing at all. 
<laughs> nothing she will she will never forget that day it will be a day to remember yeah yep yeah there i think go. i think i'm gonna just say that you should add on um just do it however you feel like it but make sure to add the jason murphy twist which is which is adding the bitch on yep. the front of it bitch bitch i love I you i love you <laughs> there's also a song by uh black joe lewis and the honey bears bitch i love you <laughs> and uh that's uh, that's romance. That's how you do it. That is how you do it. All so right. Tell us, uh, tell us how that it. goes. <laughs> film it, and we'll we'll put it up on the site. Do, don't you? Don't you? Your mouth is right and checks that you're fucking <laughs> log in on the website. Can't cash, brother. Come on, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. That is our show for the week. Uh, remember, if you want to send us in some questions, it's mail at rage. Sl- no, no. Wait, yes, it is. Mail at RageSelect.com. <laughs> Sorry, link should be down below. Mail any, any questions? At RageSelect.com. We're up for whatevs, you guys. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. This could be going up on Friday. You should keep an eye. Uh, Saturday, we've got Batman. It was Sunday, we've got Sparkle Fandango. And next week, we're going to be doing all Xbox One. So Yes, and there's going to be some streaming stuff, uh, By the maybe? time this goes up, it might have already happened. Oh, okay. But, uh, I, I don't know. I might stream on Saturday. Uh, who can say? Okay. You know, if you guys, listen, if you guys are fans of the website and you want to know when I'm going to be streaming this stuff, right now, I'm still having problems capturing the stuff that we're streaming in any kind of quality worth a damn. Uh, so like me on Facebook, like Rage Select on Facebook, and that's where I'll usually post up anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour before I start streaming. Hey, everybody, I'm going to be streaming at 7 p.m. Go over here, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So, uh, and yeah, with that, uh, let's go. I'm going to go enjoy some more of the future. The future. Oh, yes. The, the future mm-hmm. it is here. Bring that. Uh, bring your, your fucking sex bot over. We'll make him play. Larry? Yeah, yeah, he's ready. All right. 